Okay, so with the hip here, you have a lot of muscles stabilizing this area. When the muscles are tight, it pulls everything together and compresses the joint. Okay, when you have a compressed joint and you go to move it, as in walking, you create a lot more frictioning that causes more wear and tear in your, in, in your joint surfaces, right? So part of the goal is to separate this apart. Our muscles, if we tighten them up and ball them up, they create a little round bundle, right? Right. And that creates a lot of shortening and compression. We want to train our muscles to become longer. Okay, it's like a football. Right. And dancers are really good at that when they create their poise and create more space in their joints. So one of the ways to do that with um, the legs is when you're lying on a bench, I'm be sticking my buttocks at you, but um, pull the belly button up. The movement should all come from the hips. There should be no arcing in the back. Okay, so right. pulling your belly button up away from the table, that will help uh, stabilize the spine. But pull your knee in and reach that heel away. Gotcha. By reaching away, you want to create length. And you want to think about compressing the, the muscles, like compressing a balloon. You compress the balloon, it becomes longer. It's going to help separate the joints. Okay? Right. And it's just training the muscles to do that. So that when you're walking, they'll do it spontaneously. And of course, like anything else, training is going to it require time, a lot of repetition, and practice. You got to think, though, if you practice too much, you're going to fatigue yourself. So you, you need to pace, right? It's better to do it frequent and regularly as opposed to doing too much infrequently. Gotcha. Right? And you want to have time in between to rest. Um, tightness in the front of the leg here. Right. If you're able to put your, your leg on a stool that, that, mobile, that, that moves, just reaching it away like this will help open up this joint in front to lengthen these muscles. Okay, I'm, I'm going to okay. sit down for a minute here. Yeah. My leg's getting sore. Okay, I got you. So, having a stool will make it easy for you to create this movement. So anything similar to that, even stepping... Uh, uh, on a, uh, a towel, when you sit down halfway on a chair, even stepping on a towel and think about pushing that towel away from me. Now I'm losing my shoe here. But you want to push that towel away to just open up this area. Uh -huh. Okay? Uh, another easy way of doing that and more relaxing and relaxation is the key here because you want your body to let go of that tension so that it can stretch. Right. So anytime you're engaging or using force to support yourself, you're creating more tension, and that's contradictory to the idea of letting go. Now, if you're lying down on a, on a sofa or your bed and allowing the one leg to drop, again, if your stomach is not holding you in, you're going to arch your spine here. You right. want to keep that abdomen contained so that it'll keep your back nice and stable, and the opening comes off through this joint here. It doesn't need to be very big, just a little bit of a pull. It's okay. never about forcing the body to move. It's about trying to convince it to let go. Okay? okay. Changing its habits. Now, holding this for 5, 10 seconds may be no big deal. But if you hold it for a minute, two minutes, five minutes, in yoga, my instructors say, you know, you haven't even mastered a, a pose until you can hold it for several hours. All right? If you can okay. hold it for several hours, it's a good sign that your muscle tissue is nice and loose. I see. Yeah, allowing yeah. circulation. If your body is tight... The, uh, the tension, even after 5, 10 seconds, can cut off your blood flow and everything will get uncomfortable. Gotcha. Okay? If it's getting that uncomfortable so quickly, it's a good sign that you really need to do this often to release the compression. Now the back of the body, <clears throat> in the back of the hip here, just sitting with your legs long, I, I like to do the stretch here, it loosens up the entire backside. Mm -hmm. All right? And then now with the hips, an important part of here is crossing your, your foot over the knee and then using your hands to facilitate a little bit of a twist here to right. open up the, the tightness in the in the hip socket here. And uh, I showed you before there, I want to take a sheet to wrap around the knee so that uh, you don't have to pull so hard with your hand and you just let the weight of your hand and the leg pull open, up, slightly. Yeah. open up that area. By hooking your knee around the ankle, uh, your ankle around the knee here will give you a little bit of hinge to twist. Mm -hmm. If you can bring this closer up to the body by bending that knee, it's going to help isolate that hip a little bit better. 
Gotcha. Okay. And a relaxing way to stretch the backside as well is just to hang your leg up on the sofa, armrests, or pressing your leg up on the wall and allowing them to open. Uh, one of the ones that you did already is just allowing your hip to fl uh, flare onto the side like this. Right. Again, it's just giving it time to open up. And time is the key there because you want to tell your nerves to shut down and relax and you want to develop a habit of that. Habits require time and repetition to develop, okay? So everybody, you know, people wonder about meditation, whether it's good or not, and, and, and you think about the time involved in the meditation, it's really learning to relax, relax. okay? Gotcha. When you relax, you create more space, and now the exercise that I've shown you here, to push right. with all the relaxation to create the space. This exercise here is gonna train your muscles to take advantage of that release and create that lengthening of the muscles to support your joints part. Okay? Gotcha. So I'll...